In March of 1903, workmen in the Inwood section of northern Manhattan made a startling discovery. On a hilltop near the present intersection of West 212th Street and 10th Avenue, they discovered row after row of human remains buried beneath crude stone markers. According to local lore, the hill contained an old slave cemetery, once maintained by Inwood's early settlers. These slave-owning pioneers included the Dykemans, whose Dutch colonial farmhouse survives today as a museum on nearby West 204th Street. In 1765, Jacob Dykeman placed an advertisement in the New York Gazette in which he offered a $3 reward for the capture of a 40-year-old runaway slave named Will. Some 45 years later, an 1810 federal census taker reported two enslaved humans living on the Dykeman farm. The document recorded some 20 additional slaves owned by neighboring families. A reporter for the New York Times described the scene of the 1903 discovery. The rows of crude gravestones which marked the burying ground which the extension of 10th Avenue has unearthed has long been the source of varied conjecture. Old men in the neighborhood said that here lay the bones of slaves, and this belief was strengthened by a British picture which showed a few hundred yards west from the burial place the huts of blacks. Walter White, a contractor at Amsterdam Avenue and West 213th Street, who has lived in the immediate vicinity all of his life, told the reporter that it was a well-known fact in his childhood that the knoll was an old burying ground for the slaves of the old Dykeman, Vermilia, and Hadley families, whose estates were thereabout, and who themselves are buried in a little historic cemetery close at hand. The crude monuments to these graves recall the custom prevalent in this city in slavery times of burying slaves with little, if any, ceremony, the writer continued. The dread of an uprising of blacks in 1722 prompted an act providing that all Negroes and blacks be buried by daylight. The act was amended afterward so that not more than 12 Negroes should attend a funeral. The penalty for the violation of this statute was a public flogging. Furthermore, the slave was to be buried without any outward signs of grief or any ceremonial tokens, such as a pall, gloves, or flowers. Slavery was abolished in New York in 1827. While today the discovery would have been treated as one of remarkable historic importance, contractors busy grading this new extension of 10th Avenue wasted no time in obliterating all trace of the site. Amateur archaeologist and local historian William Calver bore witness as the remains were roughly removed from the earth and described the location in a later memoir. A dozen years previous to the grading of 10th Avenue, along its route through Upper Manhattan Island, we had our eye on a feature of the ground at West 212th Street on the line of the avenue, for there, amid a cluster of tall pear trees, many rude stones, which could hardly be said to be regularly set, projected from the ground. Tradition had it, as we found, that the stones marked the slaves' graves. Reginald Bellin Bolton, another amateur archaeologist who often accompanied Calver on digs, described 36 distinct graves. According to Bolton, enough evidence was secured from the hasty disinternments by the contractor's workmen to prove they had been buried in coffins, put together with large hand-forged nails. A child's skeleton was found, with a little bead necklace, which had been, we suppose, its cherished treasure. Calver, Bolton, and a handful of others were allowed to quickly examine the site before workers were sent back to level the hill. Bolton described his brief examination of the graves. The remains of these humble workers of the past, Bolton pondered, remind us of a time when, even in this neighborhood, the practice of slavery was customary. Perhaps no other relic of the past could more decidedly mark the difference than the past and the present 
than the bones of these poor, unwilling immigrants, whose labors cleared the primeval forest, cultivated the unturned sods, and prepared the way for the civilization which followed, and the tide which has overwhelmed and swept away nearly all traces of the old Nagel farm. And while the bones of 417 of Inwood's founding fathers, buried in the nearby Dykeman Nagel Cemetery, were carefully removed and reinterred in other cemeteries, most went to Woodlawn Cemetery, where today a granite monument marks the final resting place of Inwood's early residence, the remains of their slaves suffered a final indignity. According to the New York Times, Captain Flood of the Kingsbridge Police Station had directed that the old bones be decently reburied, but nobody, so far, deemed it incumbent upon himself to obey, and the bones, such as they have not been carried off by relic hunters, lie in a confused mass in an old soap box near the scene of the work. Today, an auto parts store and public school occupy the site where the remains of Inwood's slave population were once buried during the daylight hours centuries ago.